now we're going to look at a few examples of uh, angular momentum, angular impulse uh, theorem or momentum impulse theorem for the translation case and their relationship. Uh, we have a uniform rod of mass M and length L. So this is sitting on a flat surface. The gravitational acceleration is into the board. Um, the, an impulse I is applied at a distance D from the end point, which is a fixed pivot point. So it's a fixed pivot point. Uh, so what happens? Well, what will happen is this is going to cause a torque and therefore it's going to start uh, rotating and I would like to know with what angular uh, speed is, is, is it going to start uh, rotating. <clears throat> okay, so um, first of all, this is a rotation uh, for an fixed axis that is going through one of the endpoints of a uniform rod. Therefore, the moment of inertia, I, is capital M L squared divided by 3. Okay. And uh, the impulse that I'm applying, impulse by definition, is integral F dt. So during the time interval of the uh, application of the force, I have uh, an impulse. Uh, so it's the integral of f dt. Now, if I take r cross i, that's going to be integral r cross f dt. This becomes angular impulse, and this is going to be integral torque dt. All right, so this is my angular impulse. And what do I mean by R cross I? So I take the position vector uh, of the point of application of the impulse with respect to the pivot point. So that is this R vector. Uh, so I take the cross product R with I and let's say that my uh, z-axis is coming out of the board. So that's, uh, this is x, this is y, and the z is coming out. So I find that r cross i, the angular impulse, is equal to uh, d times i in the positive k hat direction. <clears throat> so that's the integral torque dt. Well, we know that torque is equal to uh, dl dt. So from uh, uh, integral of torque dt, what we actually get is the change in the angular momentum. So what was this? Uh, angular impulse, angular momentum theorem. All right, so I have here angular impulse is equal to integral torque dt, which is the change in the uh, angular momentum. So this is basically initially at rest. Uh, and I suddenly apply an impulse. So what is going to happen? There will be a change in angular momentum. It will be L final minus L initial. Since L initial is zero because it was at rest, this is going to be equal to L final. And what is L final? Because it's a rigid object, it's going to be equal to I omega. <clears throat> where omega will be, as I have drawn here, uh, in the, it's going to be in a uh, counterclockwise rotation. Omega vector is going to be omega in the k-hat direction. Using the right-hand rule, I curl my fingers 
in the direction of rotation my thumb points in positive k hat direction that's the omega vector angular velocity vector so <clears throat> the change in uh, angular momentum delta l uh, is the angular impulse delta l this is equal to d i k hat this i is the impulse right it's not the uh, moment of inertia okay so i have to pay attention to uh, different eyes here so this is a moment of inertia okay and then i have the i vector which is the uh, impulse so this is the magnitude of the impulse all right so this will be equal to uh, moment of inertia times omega so that's ml squared over 3 times omega vector so omega vector i will find to be 3 di divided by ml squared in k hat direction or in other words it's going to uh, the rod will rotate with an angular speed omega that's equal to 3 di over ml squared in the uh, counterclockwise sense in the counterclockwise direction uh, since the uh, end point is fixed it's a fixed pivot point uh, i'm going to see no translation of the center of mass only rotation is allowed uh, so i can also note this here fixed uh, end point that means there's going to be no translation okay now i'm going to look at a slightly uh, different case uh, this time i have again a uniform rod mass m length l uh, initially at rest uh, and i apply an impulse at a distance d from the end point however the pivot point is the center uh, because why is the pivot point the center because it's free to move so as you remember if you apply a force uh, to an object that is free to move that is off the center so if this is a uniform object center of mass you apply a force here but it will what will happen is it will cause rotation and translation so there will be rotation and translation of this object so that's what we will see here okay um, so I apply an impulse impulse that I apply is again integral f dt and uh, because I have the pivot point right in the middle now I'm interested in the distance between the pivot point and the point of application of the force what is this distance uh, because it's a uniform uh, rod uh, the center of mass has to be right in the middle so the, that distance is going to be d minus l over 2 because uh, this distance is l over 2 right so it's d minus l over 2 will be the distance between the pivot point the center of mass and my impulse so if i take the uh, the torque with respect to the pivot point integral r cross with f dt integral torque dt which is the angular impulse uh, this is going to be equal to uh, d minus l over 2 i times d minus l over 2 and in which direction uh, again, I call this Z, this X, and this is Y. 
and using the right hand rule I go from the pivot point to the point of application of the force curl my fingers in the direction of the force or the impulse my thumb points in positive k hat direction so this is going to be in positive k hat direction the angular impulse that I'm applying is equal to the change in angular momentum because torque is equal to dl dt remember so uh, there is going to be a rotation effect and I can find the angular uh, speed of this object now I have to be careful the moment of inertia is with respect to the center it is ml squared over 12 which we have calculated previously so this is going to be equal to L final minus L initial and L initial is 0 so I will have ML squared over 12 times omega uh, in this case and so that's going to give me an omega of uh, 12i uh, impulse d minus L over 2 divided by ml squared all right now at the same time i have uh, this object free to move so the impulse that i apply integral f dt is equal to the change in linear momentum so final linear momentum minus the initial linear momentum this is zero so this is going to be final linear momentum is the mass times the center of mass uh, velocity and this is equal to my impulse in the i hat direction so the center of mass velocity will be impulse divided by m in the i hat direction okay so uh, it's going to rotate with an angular uh, speed 12 i d minus l over 2 ml squared and it's going to translate with the center of mass velocity i over m i hat okay and uh, the what is the sense of this rotation you can see that the torque that i'm applying here will cause a rotation in the uh, counterclockwise sense so it's a counterclockwise uh, rotation so I have to note the direction of this rotation here as well. And as a result of this, if I ask you, uh, what is the velocity of point A and what is the velocity of point B? So velocity of point A will be, uh, because I have the center of mass uh, translating uh, with v center of mass here it's going to be equal to v center of mass uh, plus uh, omega times l over 2 so they're going to be the tangential velocity omega times l over 2 in i hat direction so this is the tangential velocity at point a so that's this point and this is going to be equal to i over m i hat uh, plus 12 i uh, d minus l over 2 over m l squared in the i hat direction and velocity of point b on the other hand is going to be v center of mass minus omega l over 2 i hat so it's going to be omega times the radial distance r from the pivot point because it's a rotation so this is going to be i over m minus uh, so there is the l over 2 here i have forgotten uh, l over 2 uh, minus 12 i d minus l over 2 l over 2 ml squared 
in i hat direction so we can rewrite this uh, this will be equal to i over m that is the translational velocity plus uh, this l disappears this is going to be 6 6 i d minus l over 2 divided by ml in i hat direction and this is going to be equal to i over m minus 6i d minus l over 2 